and I make it compressed. Right? Is it necessary it's compressed? Uh, even my 3D models, I don't have 3D models here, but in Unity, when I click out on 3D model, you can do polygon reduction. It's not called polygon reduction, it's optimization or something called. And I click on that. So like my characters sometimes are 1.5 megabyte. But when I bring them down, like a kind of polygon reduction, but it, I don't even visually see the difference, it comes down to 600K byte. But it's all those little things that add up. I, I had a, one app where we used 30 big textures. And all the textures are about when you imported 600K byte. Then we apply a little bit of compression on it, change the, the, the shape, and they went down to 128K byte. There's a very cool thing you have to do here, and I'm going to show you what, what I do. I do a build here. I, I don't have to build, do a build and run, I just do build. And then I go to my window here. Okay, wait a second. Come on, baby. Uh, console. Show my player console log. Okay, go to the end. Uh, uh, come on, wait a second. Eh? Show my editor console. Okay, I have to try to find it here. Okay, here. And that's very cool. It really gives a breakdown, and it somewhere should give a breakdown of everything. How much is my textures used in the game? How is the, the, the total file size? Things like that. I look at it, and then here, see? It gives you the breakdown of each object. What is the total K byte? Of course, this is a very small, little, tiny thing. But some of my games, I am having like 50 textures, um, 30 props, 40 animations. Then I start to really analyze what I can optimize. Uh, then, okay, do my, I do my textures, I do my, my ter um, models, my sounds. Uh, and then here also when I compile in my player settings, if I don't use network, make sure you don't, uh, by default, it's always enabled. I don't know why. But if you don't use it, take it off. And huge self-help uh, is this, is uh, I change it to fast with no uh, exceptions. And if you have the pro version, you can do code stripping. And if you can, uh, use it to this one. You cut out a few megabytes. But a few megabytes on a mobile device is huge. Hey, some of my apps are like 10 megabytes or 20 megabytes. If I cut out two, uh, two megabytes, that's 10% uh, I cut out. So that's only for the pro version. Um, if I have objects who are like not moving, I click static here for static batching. Um, what else do I do? Uh, of course, when I make a game, I don't make right away the full version. I make a little prototype, see if that works. And then I build on, on there. And the most important things I put in there, if it's Okay, for the player, for the play, and also if you have the pro version, you have access to. Um, uh, it's in the not for the iPhone, but for the non-iPhone version, you have access to the profiler. Uh, there's also here your stats that you can have, uh, but when you do the iPhone, you have to do some things with the SDK, and then you can actually see the real stuff for the iPhone. So uh, this is all technical stuff. Um, how I learned it is because I had to work as as in the nightmare of uh, the source engine to understand it all, finally understand it, and know that helps me in this engine to understand it all very easily. Uh, it's a lot of trial and error. There's no like magic, make it perfect uh, or optimize it. So it's trial and error. So, and of course, test it on your iPhone. Don't uh, don't test it here on. Really test it on your iPhone and deploy it on your iPhone and test on your iPhone um, with the iPad. I can here say uh, in the uh, settings, I can set, set it here to, okay. to iPad, iPad only, and I can say here simulator. So when I compile, I play it in the simulator. But I advise you not really to do it, just if you know it works already on the iPhone, but just for gameplay testing. What I really want to test first is if it all works nicely on the iPhone or the iPad. And I don't like the, so much the simulator because I was refused for one reason. When you make iPad, you must make sure it works in all the different rotation. So you have to set any scripting. If my width is 320, then I use that interface. When my width is uh, 
no, no, 320 is this and 480 is this, then it has to keep on working. The simulator only can rotate, but cannot lay flat. My first iPad ad was refused because when they laid it flat, it didn't work. So I didn't have an iPad. I flew to Los Angeles, went to the store, walked in, and said, can I have an iPad? And the, the staff said, you want to try it? I said, no. And they looked like, well, you want to try it? No, I just want to test my uh, app on it. And that's it. <laughs> Bought the iPad, plugged it in, saw the error, fixed it five minutes later. I uploaded it again for a review. And it was approved. Oh, yeah. Eh, bueno, yo puntualmente quería preguntar, eh, siempre hemos trabajado nosotros Rigid Bodies dentro de Unity, eh, no hemos logrado eh, cargar animaciones de clothes que se hacen en 3D Max, ¿qué recomendaciones tiene para poder hacer esas animaciones de telas dentro de Unity? ¿Y mean cloth animation? Yeah. Sí, sí. Oh, uh, yeah, there you talk about something very, very specific. Um, is your question, uh, you have a cloud already made, and you want that same thing in Unity. Is that what you want? It's not about the simulation. It's about the final effect you want in, correct? Sí, no sé qué. Okay. What I would do, I would, um, you, I would bake, I bake my cloud animation, but you cannot bring that in because it's a shape animation. What I would do, I would make a little script that I generate a null or a, a dummy on each vertex. Then envelope my sh uh, shape to those vertex. And when you export that, then it's just an env uh, skinning or enveloping. There's nothing to do anymore with shape. But of course, if you have one million uh, vertex, yeah, then <laughs> I, w I, I would keep it small because it's a small screen. Eh? When I work in production, I sc scale my screen in 3D Max on a regular basis just to the size of my iPhone because that's what you're going to see. Don't start to make anything that you're not going to see on the iPhone really good. So I, I hope that technique works for you. I don't know how, how much polygons you're looking at. Eh, bueno, no, no estoy seguro. Es, es un ejemplo en general. Okay. Estamos tratando de hacer una animación de una malla de una cancha de fútbol, por ejemplo, pero solamente utilizamos rigid bodies, pero obviamente no da una animación oh, fluida. I, I, utilizamos cuadrantes dentro de la malla con animaciones cargadas, pero, pero es rigid yeah, body de todas maneras. Um, yeah, I would make fake simulations, <laughs> but if you really want to do like sh like the clots fake shape animation it's the same technique i use in face animation is converting is converting my uh, creating points on my vertex and then envelope to those vertex that's how i do face animations for end game sometimes so like with uh, unity instead of like you cannot do you could do bones but if i what i do i make my animations in face robot then you can create points and envelope those to those points, and that's your way around. So okay. <laughs> if you find a, a, a great solution, email me. <laughs> okay. Any more questions? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I've been following very closely the development of a new service called Mixamo. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm wondering if you have used it. Yeah, I use it. Yeah, you, you work with them or what? You you work with them? No, no. Oh. I, I'm just following the development through the yeah, blogs. Yeah, I I work. I'm um. If you go to the website and you go to the partner page, I'm on their partner page. Um, what I like about them is that they create motions really game friendly. No, the next step they did was that you can actually take their motions right away in the editor of Unity and adjust them there. I ha the last step, I haven't checked out. But the step before, I found amazing is that you can, your rig, just send it to them. You're going to retarget there in their software and the motions are on it. And then you have sliders to adjust the motions and bring it in. I think they're going to go far uh, because they actually do know also motion capture of uh, quadrupeds, say of animals. The data is very good and very cheap for end game. 
I, I work with the largest players of motion capture, and it's very expensive. And when I look at Red Eye Studios, for instance, a few stop motions is three thousand dollars. And when I look at uh, Mixamo, I'm talking about thirty dollars for a motion. So it's good quality, cheap, and right away made game friendly. You don't have to go in motion builder anymore and make it cyclable. In the beginning pose and the end pose are the same. So you save a lot of time and a lot of headache. For thirty dollars for motion, you know you're gonna start to say to your animator, try to make it in one hour. So uh, um, I would keep following them. Uh, and they have all, they have also a great, an amazing script. It's normally when uh, you have a default walk cycle. What happens, you have the animation of cycling walking. And then in the scripting, you say push forward, and, and you go forward. But basically, you're standing still, cycling, and, and your feet sliding is always uh, very easily visible. And they made a script that basically the forward speed is driven by the stride length of the feet. So in that way, your feet are nicely planted on the floor when you walk. All through the speed of your hip is different. They calculate it in. It's actually written by the guy who made the game Touch KO. It's a very awesome script. So, uh, Any more questions? Yeah. Multiplayer. Uh, yeah, um, his question is if you can use uh, Apple for multiplayer games. Yes, that is, uh, with the, uh, at the moment, yes, you can. You can use Bluetooth or G2, uh, 3GS. And there's nice examples. Uh, I call it Fire Shooting or NG Moko made the first one where you can have multiplayer shooting against each other uh, through 3GS. What is it called? Yeah, what's it called? I, I, yeah. Um, I, I hear the half, but I know exactly what he say. Say, say the full name. Street Fire? No, it's not Street Fire. No, it's called it's MC Marco. But you can even play it over 3GS. So you play it over in over uh, network. You walk around and you can shoot each other. The only thing I li don't like about that game, you can send push notifications. I can you can you can invite me, but I travel 99% of my time around the world, my bill of my iPhone of incoming messages is huge. So, um, but the Unity 3 version, the next version is coming out also with the uh, possibility for Bluetooth. And there's already, I think, a tutorial out there who talks about that. And if you're really desperate, you can buy a Bluetooth solution already for $15 or something on the internet, so you can play Bluetooth games against each other. So. I think Bluetooth is really cool because I need a media friend. Let's play together. So, or over the network, these ways it's all possible. Yeah, but of course, don't think those coding is like a drag and drop. It's it's a little bit more complex. <laughs> um, you need a you need to have a programmer who knows what he does. So, uh, another question? Yeah. 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 Uh, there, there is a game called Interstellar Marines. Uh, I don't know if you have seen it, but they they go after an idea of an indie AAA game. So I, I was wondering if you think that that's possible to have an indie AAA game, or is indie always going to be something seen as opposite to the AAA games? Well. I think it's a very interesting question you asked there. Where are we heading with that? Because what we see now is that the AAA creators, like Electronic Arts, are going to the casual market. But they bring in the quality of the AAA games there. What we also see is that the indie developers are becoming more and more knowledgeable, creating better games. So we see that some games, and when we look at it, we would think, expect it comes from a triple A game company. All through, it's made by a few guys. Hey, when we look at the, the video game, The World of Go, it's made by two ex-employees from Electronic Arts. The guys did a phenomenal game, wicked. So I think uh, you asked a very question, what is going to happen? I don't have an answer for that. But I think it will become very overlapping. And I think that uh, big game companies will have to review sometimes what they do. Because it's very interesting when I look at uh, Valve. When you look at that company, they know exactly what they do in that way because
because they split up their games in such a small thing, small games, it looks like an indie company. If you look at uh, the game um, they made there with the, on the end of the game, you get your, a picture of uh, a gâteau um, to eat uh, a cake. <laughs> um, what's the name? Um, and you have to... Portal? Yeah, Portal. When you look at Portal, it's made by, I don't know, by eight people or something. So it starts to look like an indie development. Okay? Um, when you look at Counter-Strike, there's only a few people involved. So they, they really know, keep the team as low as possible. And when you go to their website, Valve has actually a whole article about that, giving advice of indie guys, keep it small as possible. So I think that the future of the AAA games is basically smaller games, uh, smaller teams working and pushing the mobile devices, but they're going to have access to really integrate with the social aspect, integrate with multiple platforms. That is, I think, for an indie guy, more difficult sometimes to create a game right away for different platforms and the social aspect. But it's possible. So I think it's a very good question. Where is that heading? So, And I think it will become closer. Big companies will have to adjust towards more an indie profile. And indie, indie guys really have to push themselves to stand out. Uh, any other question? I feel free. So, I cannot run away on my flight. is not until Monday, so don't worry. <laughs> uh, no more questions? So the only thing I can say in Spanish is cervezas and then... Uh, <laughs> Some of my works? Um, some of my work. Um, hoo -hoo. Um, I don't know if I have anything on this computer, really. Um, oh. OK, I'm not connected to the internet. Um, OK. Uh, yeah, but on my iPad, it's not much. <laughs> um, I have some things on my iPad. But uh, OK, I can show you this. My first app. OK. Um, this is. Um, my first app I made, and that made me fifty thousand dollars. But it was the simplest one ever. But um, so that's what I that's what I very interesting. Like your question about indie and and triple aim, because I have my own ga game company where we, in a small team, make games. On the other hand, I'm working every day for the large corporations. Like uh, last week, I was working at Sony Entertainment, where we they have a staff of four hundred people working on Major League Baseball. Uh, so we have a lot of companies working on it, and that's a lot of people working on it. So I see really the differences, uh, and that's what I mainly do for work. But then I make the simple ones here, and that, that was my first app, and it's really simple. I'm gonna show it here. Uh, still, I, d I didn't even convert it yet to the pro version. Um, what I did was uh, my a hand model, uh, and you click on the button, and it shows the letter. Similar as it could be. Uh, um, I made 26 keys, and that's it. <laughs> and then, um, then I updated the version to Chris. I, I know I can do a Chris. There's a Chris button, and then it shows me a letter, and I have to guess which one it is. All through, I made that sign language game. I still failed the test. I still don't know <laughs> the signs. Uh, uh, then, yeah, I don't have much here. Um, Okay, what I have. At the moment, I'm working on a, um, for a publisher um, and a company who um, makes children books, and they're converting all the children books to the iPad, and we're converting that for the iPad with interactivity for kids, because um, a lot of people don't realize this. When you want to make money, make a, a book on the iPad, an interactive book. Uh, in the last months, there has been more magazines and books sold on the iPad than there's been games sold on all the iPhone. So that's a huge market you can tap in to make like books, interactive books. So uh, I have worked on, I was a consultant for Blur Studios for uh, Wolverine, Halo Wars, uh, maybe you heard of those games. Um, what did I do else? Uh, <laughs> I was recently at, uh, ID Software, if you know that company. ID Software made the video game Doom. 
So I, I was there for consulting for uh, Doom and Rage. Uh, yeah, they were also the makers of Wolfenstein. Yeah, um, I worked. F yeah, I, I did uh, test shots for uh, Rock Band and Guitar Hero. Have you ever heard of those games? <laughs> My wife has still never heard of them. So, um, yeah, I'm thinking what I all worked on and what I've done. Uh, if you go to unit uh, to the iTunes Store and type in Fundi 3D, there you're gonna find some of my apps. Uh, but mainly, what I do know is I uh, other corporations come to me to make the games because we are indie guys. We can make it cheaper, and they buy it out from us. Um, but what the cool thing is that we started uh, recently with all serious games now for people who are afraid of spiders, um, people are afraid of heights, and was the first time we said okay we make it but with revenue sharing and the companies went right away say yeah okay it's good so we said that amount of money for the project and for every game we want 30 percent and they said okay so that's really good so and i gave i gave right away the revenue to my staff i said i don't need it you guys are the hard workers so any more questions <laughs> I would like to know the jokes. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what's the future in augmented reality? I, I found it very interesting because my background, I have a master's in virtual reality. So, <coughs> so that fascinates me. And also the, the last apps I write, because for the people who are afraid of spiders, and I'm writing now a very funny one is for people who are afraid of speaking. For people who are afraid of speaking, and people who look at the video, and they have to read a text. And what? Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, people who are afraid of speaking, and when they look at it. And a video, the heart rate goes up to already 180 uh, beats a minute. But no, what we do is we make it in 3D, so it's not a video anymore. We can change the animation so the, the mo so the people don't get always see the same. If they see the same, they they start to realize like yeah, uh, yeah. But with that, they start to see whoa. And what we do now is make it with 3D and stereoscopy, and we see a big impact on the people. Like whoa, they're really afraid. So you see, it's really important. And today, Unity announced their collaboration with, with, what, with, yeah, yeah, it could be. I forgot the name. No, they're gonna force. That's all I know. I didn't look into more. But when I look back two years ago, the quality was not there for augmented reality for iPhone for mobile devices. Uh, the hardware was not there. The quality. I hope it will be available. It will be good. I cannot say it's great. I've worked a lot with stereoscopy on bigger projects, uh, but for mobile devices, uh, mobile devices are, are a weak computer. So uh, we will see. But Unity works very good for stereoscopy with the uh, with, um, with the Pro A with the special glasses with the Nvidia graphic cards. It works pretty good. But I'm more in interested in the mobile devices. So yeah. It's it's a big question mark. If if they pull it off, then it will be phenomenal. So, are you working on on a, on a project like that? Or? Yeah. So yeah, that's hey. Okay, okay. And in which form and which way you do that? Or is it secret? <laughs> oh, oh, I agree. <laughs> Time to change. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would not work with that engine. So, yeah. And there's nice examples already on Unity of, of people who used it for augmented reality. And they're going to work, look at it. Okay, I don't think it's such a priority for them. It's a small market. But if you want work on a project like send the project and tell you information about Unity, they're very interested to hear about projects that non game. Because they capture the game market, they prove it, they got it. But now they want to 
get that market because yeah, Virtuals had a big market in that. But Vir Virtuals is, is a lot more expensive for, to use it in commercial environment. And Unity is much cheaper. Right? And there's a lot more possibilities to integrate stuff in it. So, and using the glasses or what do you use? Or red and blue or? Oh, webcam. Okay, cool. Yeah, but no, I think that's the future to, to look at. It, it, looking at the, with the glasses, with the expensive, it's done, but it's not available for the market. People are not going to buy it. And that's what I'm working on with a, a psychology for making those apps. Because in the past, to make an installation with the shutter glasses for a psychology department is too expensive. And the patient has to come over to see and the, the, to be there. That's why we weren't with the red and blue glasses who are not so good quality, but the patient can buy for their iPad or their iPhone. And in that way, it becomes av available for the patients, it becomes available for the big markets. But at the moment, when we talk about shutter glasses, we talk about too much money. Uh, yeah, any other question? Don't be afraid. So. <laughs> we are scared. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> ¿Cuál es el, el pipeline de trabajo que utilizas en tus trabajos? Oh, um, depends. If I for, for indie, it's I keep it really simple. I, I, I do uh, literally they model in, three, in um, for me it's soft image. A little bit strange, but and Photoshop, and then well, re restart. First of all, they have to really make a better version, like a simple version with simple blocks, uh, no nice graphics, and test that, and provide that to the client if they're happy, and change that. I never work with a final version or go right away good quality because you lose time and you lose money on the end uh, then they block everything out make uh, the characters they send it to the client if that is okay then we implement in the game Not b we don't implement anything right away in the game because a lot of people start to implement to impress the clients but it hurts you on the end so and I try to overlap right away like when the guys are modeling, I have the riggers already and the animators busy to bring the time down. Uh, That's for indie guys. Of course, when I work in big production, it's a whole different story. Then we do mixed pipelines, mixed software. Some people are working in 3D Max and we bring it over to Maya, bring it back. But there you have already staff to back up it technically. But for indie guys, keep it simple. But here's also my advice is buy powerful tools. Don't start to say, I'm gonna, not going to buy Photoshop. I'm going to use a GIMP or something. Uh, you're going to make it yourself difficult. So, but keep your cost low, of course. That's the most important thing in the, in the pipeline. Uh, um, pipeline is really personal sometimes, I find. Uh, I go, I see a lot of different companies. And when I'm at Sony Entertainment, they they gave me the whole spiel why they use that pipeline. The next week I'm at Raven Software, they laugh at that pipeline and I say, no, that's our pipeline, it's much better. Uh, but for an indie guy, buy powerful tools, work fast, and make a simplified pipeline. Like, don't start them with different softwares to go back and forward, keep it simple. Uh -huh. That's my advice, yeah. Or if there's a specific thing you're looking at in a pipeline, Eh, no, no, simplemente como para saber, comparar un poco las herramientas que utilizamos con las tuyas. Por ejemplo, yeah, yo hace, what are your tools you use? Yo uso 3D Max, eh, pues obviamente Unity, Photoshop, uh, uh. y ahora último estoy usando Motion Builder también para las animaciones. Ya, yeah, uh, quería, yeah. quería preguntarte, yeah. eh, vos hablas que comprabas las animaciones, eh, las de captura yeah. de movimiento. ¿Cuál es como la parte más barata donde uno las puede encontrar? I think Mixamo. Yeah. And um, I find it very interesting to say Motion Builder because 
it's such been a grow in the last years I see of people using Motion Builder for the animations. The, in the past, everybody was always working through C Max or in Softimize, but there's a huge shift to Motion Builder. Uh, uh, Sony Entertainment uh, in San Diego is only using Motion Builder now. Not one animation is done in Maya or in C Max. It's all in Motion Builder because it's so much easier to do it. And then if you buy stop motions, you apply it, you do your changes, what you have to do, and you're done. You save money. So I know it's a bit of an investment to get a package of 3ds Max and Motion Builder, but it pays off. So, uh, uh. Any other questions? What? what? Uh, just regarding, uh, like, where uh, can we go to to school to study, like, uh, this kind of stuff? Because here in Colombia it's kind of hard. Like, I was uh, looking for uh, web development. Uh, I was just finished a whole workshop here at a school called NAS. Yeah, we just did that there, and uh, I was impressed with the work there. Some of the students were really already busy, and then the instructors were already busy with Unity, and they're creating very good quality. I was impressed by that. I have my private school in Canada who teaches that, but the tuition fee in Colombia versus the United States in Canada is a huge difference. But what I've seen, I visit about 150 schools a year. Okay, A lot of people think I have to go to the United States or Canada to study animation. No. It, there's no different tools they teach you. There's no different secrets they teach you. Uh, my advice is, if you can't afford to go to a school, go to a school, get digital tutors, uh, um, learn from tutorials, uh, because the instructors can only be so updated <laughs> uh, like you sometimes. And I see a lot of in times where students can produce very good quality. Uh, but try to make a game already and sell it before you graduate. That impresses. Because that shows not only your talent, but also your mentality. That shows how you can work with people uh, that you hit the deadlines. And that's what I'm more interested in when a student graduates. Can he hit his deadlines? Um, I don't know really good Colombia. Eh? I've only been here for three days or something. But I was really impressed by that school. I uh, not get what they create. And... Um, some of the students had already like iPhone uh, uni um, Unity uh, levels ready. It was very impressive. So I would check them out. Um, I did everything on my own. I studied literally on my own. But I, sometimes I think I'm crazy uh, because I'm done working at 11 o'clock at night, at 1 o'clock at night, and I study then. And then my wife, when I'm home, I'm only four days a month home. Then she says, you still have to work? <laughs> I'm addicted to it. And I think you have to be addicted to games to, to, to do it. If you're going to just work from 9 to 4, it will be hard because the other indie guy next to you will work until 12 o'clock at night to make it happen. But it's not only about working hours, but having knowing a target market. Like When I think about you guys, like a specific market, augmented reality, things like that, that's a niche market. And if you understand that market, you hit it, bang. That's what I did by my sign language. It's a very small uh, target market but I went after a very small market but I captured all that market and I made money I paid my bills and more <laughs> my advice is if you can afford to go to school go to school and do a lot of self study and working so to get there so yeah <laughs> Um, if you want my, I think, I can, uh, for the people who want to contact me, I can give you my email or my card if you have questions. Um, I try to reply as soon as possible. I get about 200 emails a day. I have, an, I have calculated actually over one year. I have a response rate of 30%, <laughs> so I'm very bad. But the things I like are games emails, Unity emails, uh, 3D project emails. Then I like to read and to reply. 
Eh? Um, but if you want to talk about all jokes, I, I don't respond. So I like to make jokes, but not not on uh, email reading because I have enough emails. So, uh, but I, I love to give advice to people. So okay, well, uh, I think I'm gonna say it right. Buenas noches. Is correct? Who? Because in China, I tried one time and I did it wrong. <laughs> Everybody starts to laugh, and the the translator told me, you said, I want kisses. <laughs> it didn't answer good my presentation, so I tried, but it, it worked. So uh, thank you so much, uh, gracias, and I uh, hope to see you later on in Bogota, and if you have questions, just come to me, and I am glad to provide my contact info. So, uh, gracias. <laughs>